Hi, this is Maggie. In this video, we're going to talk about Java strings and some of the text manipulation we can do in Java using the string class. First, some basics. Strings are ordered sequences of characters, with each character represented by a number. That number is a Unicode representation of the character. Java uses Unicode, UTF-16, to represent character data. Unicode is its own somewhat complicated topic, but basically we can assume that the Java character and string processing methods will take care of most of the details for us. It is important to know that characters are represented as numbers because those numbers are used in string comparisons, which can be used to order strings. For example, the character uppercase A is represented as hexadecimal 41, written as the Unicode code point U plus 0041. And the character uppercase B is represented as hexadecimal 42, written as the Unicode code point U plus 0042. Thus, uppercase B is larger than uppercase A because the number used to represent B is larger. Strings are indexed beginning at zero. So in this image representing the string hello comma world exclamation point, we draw a series of connected boxes for our characters in the string with the characters in the boxes and the indices drawn above. So H is at index zero, the comma is at index five, the space is at index six, etc. The last index is one less than the length of the string because the indexing begins at zero. I also have a representation showing the hexadecimal Unicode code points for the characters in the string. So H is U plus 0048, E is U plus 0065, etc. The indices can be useful for searching within a string or extracting a substring, which we'll get to after we've finished covering the basics. Strings are objects, meaning our string variables are references to objects stored in heap memory. Java allows us to construct strings from literals, which can make it seem like strings are primitive types. We can also create strings using the new keyword and a constructor, as we do with other objects. If we look at Oracle's documentation for string, we can see all of the constructors for the string class. We can pass in no arguments and create an empty string, or we can pass in arrays of bytes, characters, Unicode, code points, or objects of string, string buffer, or string builder types. Here is some code that creates four string variables. The first assigns the literal string hello world to string one. The second assigns string one to string two. The third assigns new string hello world to string three. And the fourth assigns new string string one to string four. I have done this not to illustrate the different ways you can create a string variable, but to illustrate how this will be handled in memory. How many of these string variables reference unique objects in memory, and how many of them reference the same string? Let's use equals equals and print out whether each of these strings equals the literal string hello world. We hopefully agree that they all reference the characters hello world, but if I print string one equals hello world, string two equals hello world, string three equals hello world, string four equals hello world, I get true, true, false, false. Why? If we run in the debugger, notice that string one and string two have the same ID, meaning they're referencing the same string in memory. But string three and string four are both different from strings one and two and different from each other. In addition, from our comparisons, we know that string one, string two, and the literal string hello world are all equal meaning they all reference the same location in memory. Remember that when we have a variable referencing an object, as string variables are, and we assign one to another with an assignment statement, we're assigning the reference to the object. Essentially, we're copying the memory location in the heap where the object is stored. In this representation, it's like we're copying the arrow, so we have another arrow pointing to the same place. And when we compare with the equality operator equals equals, we're comparing the references. So now this is starting to make sense. The equality operator is returning true when the objects are referencing the same string in memory. How does Java decide whether to make a new string or reference an old one? 
When the keyword new is used, Java creates a new string in memory. So with string three and string four, a new object in memory is created and the parameter string is copied character by character to that new string. So the contents are the same, but the reference is different. There is a whole new string. When a literal is assigned to a string variable, as with string one, the variable gets a copy of the reference to the literal string in memory. And when a variable is copied to a variable, as with string two, the reference is copied to the new variable, so both variables reference the same location in memory. You should only compare strings with the equality operator equals equals if you want to know if the variables are referencing the same string in memory. We usually don't want to know that. We usually want to know whether the values of the string are the same. Are they composed of the same characters in the same order? To compare string values, use dot equals, or if we want to compare regardless of case, use dot equals ignore case. If I change this code to compare each of my strings to the literal hello world using dot equals, for example, string three dot equals hello world, and print the results, they all print true. If I am interested in a case insensitive comparison, I use dot equals ignore case. For example, string one dot equals ignore case hello world. Also evaluates to true. If you want to order strings, you can use compare to or compare to ignore case. For example, I can write a dot compare to b. And if I print the result, it's negative one. If the result is negative, the string before the dot is less than the string passed as a parameter. If it's positive, the string before the dot is greater than the string passed as a parameter. And if it's zero, they're equal. Let's look at one more set of string methods and write a program that uses them. You can get the index of a substring within a string using index of. And you can search backward through a string looking for a substring using last index of. Both of these methods can use a default starting point of zero for index of, or the length of the string, minus one, the index of the last character for last index of. But they can also take a second parameter, which is the starting index. If the substring is not found in the string, both methods return negative one. So, for example, I can write a loop that will find all of the L's in hello world using index of by writing int index equals string one dot index of L. While index is not equal to negative one, system out print line L found at index, index equals string one dot index of L plus plus index. This finds the first index of L. If it's not in the string, it'll return negative one and we won't enter the loop. If it is, we'll go into the loop and print the location and then increment index. So we begin searching at the next location and look for the next index, but this time passing in the starting location, one past where we last found L. Suppose we have a tendency to type a particular proper name incorrectly, and we want to write a program to go through and find all incorrect occurrences and replace with correct occurrences. In the next video, we'll look at better, more efficient ways to do this. But if we can write the algorithm using string operations and methods, it will help us understand how strings are indexed. I'm going to write this as a method so I can unit test it. So I'll write a method called find and replace, and it will take the string with the occurrences called text, the string to search for called search, and the string to replace with called replace. And we'll use a similar algorithm from where we searched. In fact, let's copy and paste that up so we can work with it. Now we're going to substitute our parameter text for string one, and we'll substitute our parameter search for L. 
And when we've found the string, rather than displaying the location, we're going to replace it. Now, first, strings are immutable, so we can't simply replace our string in place. We'll have to build a new string. This is why this is inefficient. We're going to make a whole new string every time we find an occurrence of search. Those strings will have to get garbage collected by Java. But we'll use this algorithm, and in the next video, we'll learn of a class that will be a better fit for this task. Because we're going to be replacing the reference to the string that we're searching, in other words, the result string is going to be a new string object, we'll return the string. Now, in our loop, we'll build a new string. I'll call it new text. And it's going to be the original string up until where we found our string search. So I'll use substring text.substring 0 index. The substring method returns the string starting at the first parameter, in this case 0, up until but not including the second parameter. So we'll go right up to the first character of search but won't include it. Then we'll concatenate in replace using plus, and then we want to include the rest of the string. So text.substring index plus search.length, and through text.length. Again, up to but not including, so we won't get an out-of-bounds error. Now we'll need to adjust index. And just in case the replace string contains an occurrence of the search string, let's just skip right past it. So index plus equals replace.length. And of course, I'm going to set text equal to new text. And then we search again. Let's write a JUnit test class and see how we did. I'll right click on the folder and say new JUnit test case. And then we'll let Eclipse add JUnit 5 to the project. And let's write tests that test for the string as the first occurrence in the string, the last occurrence, in the middle, just a whole string of the search string once, many times, um, zero times, and replacement strings that are longer, shorter, and the same size as the search string. Let's write a one character string to search for and a one character string to replace. I'm trying to think of as many edge cases as I can, but if I missed some, please tell me in the comments. Oh, how about an empty string? We'll do that too. Okay, I'll write that. Well, that's some of our tests. Let's run it. Ooh. Okay, and we did identify an error in our code, so that means a successful set of test cases. And it looks like we're missing one, so we're, we've moved too far beyond um, our text when we search. Um, so let's go back. Um, so length, uh, let's, let's subtract one here. And we get the green bar. Okay, so that is a quick overview of some Java string basics. I hope that it's helpful to you. In the description of this video, there are some auto-graded practice exercises for you, so you can practice writing the loop and method that we wrote here. Give those a try, and maybe experiment with strings a little bit on your own, like we did here, until you can always predict the results of an operation. Once you can do that, you're ready to move on.